not to waste it in all worthless and useless things of this world, but really to engage your heart and soul towards the realization of the truth. That's why the lake is given. But people, the, first of all, people are not aware of this fact. Because when they are not aware of the existence of God, how can they become aware of the practice to realize the truth? First they should be convinced that they, God exists, you know. <laughs> so that's why existence of God is proved by all these uh, different examples which I gave. Now there should not be any doubt about the presence of the Divine. So once that is cleared off, then you must have firm conviction. Now, I must step up my practice to experience it by myself. He might have seen, she might have seen, but what does it to me? I have to see myself. That the Vivekananda, he himself wanted to realize the truth that everything is Brahman. Before that it was simply ridiculous. He was uh, just scoffing. So, he had to practice himself. Because his mind was thoroughly pure, he could realize it quickly. Effort has to be made. Pursha Prayatna should be made. Once you do effort, you will recognize the grace of God. Everything comes from your own heart. God abides in your heart, you know. But it shows up and nicely and you feel more and more comfortable, more and more peaceful and more and more drawn towards the reality. Like that. Thank you. For purposes, it seems to me that one can pretty much prove the existence of God provided you think of God as an external God, someone other than oneself. But I'm wondering if there are arguments that one can mount to also prove the existence of God if you are strictly following the Advaitic you know, sense of the meaning of God. And as a follow-up question, I was wondering if uh, Adi Shankara at any time he ever tried to, to address the same question of the existence of God itself. See, his, again, is it complete? Yes. Have you become aware of the question now, all of you? No. Repeat. Please repeat again loudly, little loudly. Okay. See, whenever you put question, yeah. let it be short. The more you elaborate the question, the question part disappears. <laughs> <laughs> so, be very short in question. And if any clarification is required, I will ask that. So, be specific in your question, what exactly you wanted to ask. The first part of the question was, in order to prove that God exists, it seems fairly easy, you know, at least now that you have told us, from all the arguments made, that God exists mm -hmm. if one is willing to think of God as someone other than oneself, as an external God, as um, a separate power, if you will. That, it seems to me, is easy. But can you also give arguments as to why does God exist in yourself? So, from... In oneself. She's saying it's easy to probably infer the existence outside of yourself. How do you, how do you know that he's within you? In fact, I've already told in the course of my talk that God exists everywhere. In the first few sentences itself I told that. See, the atheist says God is nowhere. The theist says God is now here. That means God is everywhere, He is omnipresent. That means He is present in my heart, in everyone's heart. That, that's the fact. So, when God is in everyone, 
but that is theoretical conception and because of the because of the power of god only that i am able to function in this body so that way the existence of god is uh, proved but why we externalize god because it is easy to grasp god that way sri ramakrishna says god is both for with form and formlessness both are true god is with form and without form that is god is an unmanifest state and manifested state in manifested state he is manifest everywhere but the degree of manifestation is different but his manifestation is great in human beings it has been described like that and uh, one has to struggle in order to realize the truth but first of all you must have faith in the truth all the saints have realized it so it should be possible for me to also to realize and shankaracharya himself has uh, uh, declared that all the the whole universe is uh, covered up by the god consciousness and the thing but god that exists the existence is god only because everything is changes constantly changing our body also constantly changes every day we are aging one fine day we are disappearing from this world so anything that is changing is perishable that which is not changing that which is permanent that is the reality and that reality is called as god but everybody has got different type of some temperament mind samskaras capabilities capacities skills etc so accordingly out of infinite grace god assumes different forms not to satisfy the different aspirations of the devotees in whatever way you want god that way god appears to you that's the meaning so god can assume any form <coughs> he is of infinite forms sahasra shirusha purusha sahasra akshas sahasra bhavat that's the idea there explained so for some people god as form is most fascinating appealing immediately they can concentrate for some people he thought any form is most fascinating in fact master mahesh himself said to shri ramakrishna master i would like to make it on formless god shri ramakrishna please make it as very good perfectly all right but don't say that god with form is wrong both are real you go according to your own way everyone has got a way that means as god's forms are infinite the paths leading to god also are infinite each individual being can have one soul path but all the paths are considered as radii of the sent circle all the radii radii they join in the center same way we are all going towards the center and the center is the reality one may be christian one may be muslim one may be vaishnava shakta hindu whatever it is whatever label you may have but you are all proceeding towards the reality just as the rivers though coming from different directions if you see the mountain different different directions water will be flowing but all the water is flowing towards where towards the ocean the ultimate reaches ocean 
same way, we are all reaching Satchitananda Sagara, portion of infinite bliss. Yes? God, the people in this world, then why some people have to suffer from hunger, <laughs> from disease, and from natural disaster, where others don't? <laughs> This eternal question is always there. <laughs> For people who are suffering, they think God is not very kind because their suffering is not going. Because they are suffering. All these things are because of our attachment towards, towards our body, mind and our actions. Why we suffer? We must go to the cause. Then we will get the remedy. As I said, our sufferings are due to our own actions. In whatever way we have done in our lives, the result of those actions, we are reaping in the form of sufferings and happiness. So, God is trying to make us understand that why we are suffering because we are identifying ourselves with uh, unreal things and doing all sorts of actions which are binding us into this world. So, naturally, they won't give you happiness. Where there is attachment, there cannot be happiness. That's the law. So, you have to be detached. We have to develop non-attachment. Attachment to body and mind should be withdrawn. If you have to be attached, be attached to God. As God is your own self. Self means not the mind, Atman. Atman has no death. So, it is, it is immortal. The immortal self, Atman, Nainam Shindanti Chastrani, Nainam Dhati Pavakaha, Nachenam Kledi Antyapo, Nashoshayati Maruta. This Atman cannot be killed, cannot be burnt, cannot be wet. It always exists. Because it always exists, it leaves the body and takes another body. Why should it take another body? Because the desires are in the mind. See, when the soul leaves the body, the subtle body goes along with the soul. Subtle body. Subtle body is the mind. Mind is the storehouse of all the samskaras. Whatever you have seen or done through your senses, they are all recorded in the mind. All your likes and dislikes, whether you want them or not, Simply they go and record, stay there in the mind, in the form of impressions. Whatever the strong impressions are there in the mind, they determine your future birth. That's why Sri Krishna says, So Veshu Kaleshu Mahamanusmara. All the time, remember my name. Why did, he, why did he say so? Unless you remember all the time, how can, you realize, how can you remember him at the time of your death? You may be thinking of your petty dog. Or you may be thinking of some bank account at the time of death. So next time you will become a millionaire. Very nice meaning.